Have you ever wondered if getting a new Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD would make loading of your games and applications faster? Or would it be just about the same and there is no rush in upgrading? In this video I'll be testing new generation Seagate Firecuda 530 at 1TB capacity against my one-year-old Corsair MP600 also at 1TB capacity to find the answer. According to the Passmark Hind Drive chart, it is one of the fastest SSDs in the world right now. It was ranked number 10 at the time of making this video. This ranking changes often based on newly submitted results, so the positions might be different when you look at it. But it gives you a rough idea how your drive is doing against the competition. Remember that cooling of the drive also plays a significant role in how it performs. When I read the drive reviews done by other people, I was missing one important thing, and that is how these drives do in real life scenarios. So what I did in my video is that I ran two standard benchmarks just to get the numbers for comparison and I expected the newer drive to take the lead. But then I ran 6 games and 11 productivity applications and I had no idea what would happen. But before we get to that, Let's first unbox this drive and let's take a look at how it looks like. The package includes a bunch of stickers, data recovery service leaflet, limited warranty information and the drive Seagate Firecuda 530. What I also did is that I removed the sticker because it was preventing the drive from being cooled efficiently. Both drives were cooled by this M.2 heatsink which is part of Azeroc X570 Creator motherboard and which weights exactly 30 grams. Before we look at the results of the benchmarks, there is one more thing I want you to know. And it is that many people who buy Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSDs buy them to speed up the loading time of their operating system, which is absolutely fine. But what they don't know when they look at the results of those benchmarks is which numbers really affect it because they don't know how the file structure of that operating system looks like. So what I prepared for you is a small file structure analysis of Windows 10 Pro and Windows 11 Pro, which will put these numbers into a different perspective so that you know which really matter. When we look at the file structure of newly installed Windows 10 Pro main directory, and this is with all updates installed, we can see that it contains over 97,000 files, which take up little over 15 gigabytes of space. This is a lot of files. Most of these files are in top 11 subdirectories, which are sorted here by their sizes. And now the most important thing. Let's take a look at the file sizes distribution. On the left chart, we can see how many files are present in each of the 14 file size categories. The right chart shows you how many gigabytes of space these files take up. When we draw a red line under the most populated file size categories and look above it, we can see that over 64,650 files, 
66% of total, have a file size smaller than 16 kilobytes, and that they take up 0.2 gigabytes of space combined. When we narrow down this selection to files, which are even smaller, remember that Windows default allocation unit size is 4 kilobytes, 4096 bytes, we can see that over 46,000 files, 47% of total, are smaller than 4 kilobytes and take up 0.05 gigabytes or 50 megabytes of space. This tells us that if we want our OS to load as fast as possible, we need an SSD which is capable of reading files of these file sizes faster compared to other SSDs. And this is despite the amount of space these files take up. I did the same analysis with a fresh installation of Windows 11 Pro, so let's take a look at it. We can see that Windows 11 Pro has a lower total number of files compared to Windows 10 Pro. It has 97,587 files, which is 285 less than Windows 10. Most of the capacity is concentrated in these top 11 directories. It is very similar to Windows 10 Pro. So let's take a look at the file size structure. When we look above the red line, we can see that over 63,000 files, 65% of total, are smaller than 16 kilobytes and that they take up 0.18 gigabytes or 180 megabytes of space. When we narrow down this selection to files which are even smaller, Windows 4 kilobyte file allocation unit size still applies, we can see that over 47,000 files, 49% of total, are smaller than 4 kilobytes and that they take up 0.04 gigabytes or 40 megabytes of space. So the situation is similar to Windows 10 Pro, but the total number of files is just a little bit smaller. This of course doesn't tell us how the OS is programmed or how many background services are being loaded, but it tells us that if we wanted to load majority of files into operating memory as fast as possible, we'd need an SSD which performs well at this specific discipline. Therefore, I will specifically notify you about it when we look at the following results of the drives in synthetic benchmarks. To make the test as close to reality as possible, I cloned my 1TB MP600 drive with all applications on it, 50% was free and 50 full, to this new Seagate Firecuda 530, and then I ran all benchmarks and tests on both drives. I used this setup for testing. Both SSDs were placed into the first M.2 PCIe 4.0 slot, which is directly connected to the CPU by four PCI Express lanes, which are not shared by any other slots or sockets. So now we can take a look at the synthetic benchmarks. I recorded all runs on camera to make sure there is no interference caused by other programs running in the background. Both benchmarks showed significant differences between the SSDs, where the new one outperformed the older one in all tests, which was expected. Both drives reached the same temperature of 49 degrees Celsius after completing crystal disk mark. A disk benchmark shows lower numbers because the default settings are using only 256 megabyte file size and crystal disk mark uses 1 gigabyte file size. Let's take a look at the screenshots of both benchmarks in more detail. Seagate Firecuda 530 reached 33% higher performance in large file retests and 22% higher performance in small file retests. This value is the most important for loading applications which use many small files, like Windows OS, as you saw in the file structure analysis. So if you want your OS to load faster, this is the most important parameter to look at when comparing the performance of drives. I'm not saying 
The other parameters don't play a role, they do, but in different tasks. After you install your applications, most of the time you have them on your drive is spent by reading their files. Writing performance becomes important when you are moving large volumes of files, which usually happens less often. However, this drive performs great in this area as well. The main focus of this video is reading of files. So let's now move to the application loading times, which I measured to find out what is the difference in real life daily use if I opted to go for the new drive. Loading time of Windows 10 Pro was improved by a little over a second, which is not bad, but also not groundbreaking. When I tested the startup time of Windows 7 Pro and Windows 11 Pro, installed in virtual machines, the difference was smaller, 0.84 and 0.72 seconds, but it was consistent. I repeated the test several times, always after restart of course, to make sure the files aren't preloaded in the operating memory. In graphics applications, the difference was more significant, ranging from 1.21 to 2.09 seconds. In daily office apps I selected, the difference was also noticeable, ranging from 6.4% in case of Firefox to 51.4% in case of Microsoft Excel. Generally, there was no application which loading time wouldn't be improved. So let's now take a look at the games. Games followed a similar trend. The biggest improvement was measured in AAA titles. Firecuda 530 was faster in Cyberpunk 2077 by 1.16 seconds or 9.25% and in Horizon Zero Dawn by 3.54 seconds or 22.24%. As in the previous tests, new drive outperformed the older one in all tests, which was expected. Let's take a look at the summary. Seagate Firecuda 530 beat Corsair MP600 in all tests. In OS and productivity applications, the average difference was 0.88 seconds or 15.31%, which is a reasonable improvement. In games, this difference was 0.93 seconds on average, which is even higher, but it is only 7.63% in total, because especially the AAA games take longer to load than most productivity applications so the percentage increase is lower. In some cases where the difference was very small, below a quarter of a second, it was almost impossible to be noticed by a user. But this is with the exception of situations where the loading time of the applications is very short and the user is used to using them often enough to notice the difference. Then the loading feels just a bit snappier. Also, some applications loading time wouldn't improve, no matter the speed of the drive, because of how they are programmed. So this needs to be taken into consideration as well. When we look at the specifications of both drives, one thing which is worth pointing out is the endurance. MP600 has an exceptional endurance of 1800 TB writes, which is one of the reasons why I like this drive and Firecuda 530 has 1275 TB writes, which is roughly 30% less, but it's still very good. Although it is slower, it is still way above the competition, which usually has only about half, around 600 TB writes. So when you are looking at the prices of the drives, this parameter should definitely not be overlooked. There are several approaches you can take when looking at the results of this test. On one hand, you can say that the biggest difference between the loading time of those two drives was three and a half seconds and usually it was around one second. So can't you just wait a second? It really makes no sense spending more money on a new drive. Or you can take a different approach and 
look at it from the time perspective and long-term perspective, I would say, and that is that every time you load up any application, you'll save around one second and it can happen multiple times a day, depending on how many applications you load. This will happen every day, every week, every month and every year. So this all adds up into less time wasted and more productivity and potentially a better user experience. Everything feels snappier. So this makes absolute sense. I'll leave the decision which approach you take to you. It also depends on how much you want to spend. But for me personally, better is better. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about any of the drives, please leave them in the comments below. And from me, that's it. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.